Slavko Yakshik was a tourist from Chile who arrived in South Africa in August 2018 for an extended holiday with his girlfriend. They visited the usual tourist stops such as the Kruger Park. In September, his girlfriend returned home, but Slavko wanted to stay on for a month longer to experience the real South Africa. He traveled through the rural interior, sleeping out in the open, pitching a tent wherever he found himself. Occasionally, Slavko would meet strangers who would offer him a bed for the night. During his travels, Slavko kept regular contact with his family and girlfriend, using WhatsApp to let them know how he was doing. In late September, he was pitching his tent along the roadside outside the town of Dundee in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands. The area is rich in history, the earth soaked in the blood of Zulu warriors, Boer commandos and British redcoats. As he was making camp, a local missionary worker saw him and invited him to overnight at the Malusi Christian Mission instead. Malusi provides a homeless shelter and so was able to offer a safe bed for the night. Slavko ended up spending a weekend at the mission and it was here that he sent his last WhatsApp message to his girlfriend on September the 25th. From there he headed off again for the nearby town of Ladysmith. In the following days, his family grew increasingly anxious as Slavko failed to check in. Concern turned to outright alarm when he didn't board a flight in Johannesburg back to Santiago on October the 10th. His family contacted South African authorities and contracted a private investigator to help track Slavko down. His father, Sergio, flew out from Chile to be close to the search. It wasn't until around October the 20th that a solid lead was found when police were notified of an unidentified body in a government morgue in the town of Ladysmith. It was here, nearly a month after Slavko was first reported missing, that Sergio came to stand over the body of his dead son. According to police, children passing through a field just outside the town had noticed a strong odour from an informal campsite. On closer investigation, they found a body covered in a sleeping bag. Possessions were scattered about, but no identification was found. Eventually, police put two and two together and reconciled a missing persons report with the unidentified body. Police say forensics estimate that he died around September the 28th. In early November, a week after his body was discovered, police put out a statement providing further details of how he died. Spokesman Tembeka Mbele confirmed that Slavko had met a violent death. It was confirmed that the body was found with stab wounds, Mbele said. Slavko had been assaulted and stabbed at least three times. His backpack was missing, as was his camera and smartphone. As yet, the police have not identified any suspects. However, the site at which he was found was frequented by homeless people and drug addicts. There is no indication that Slavko was either of these things, of course, but he did appear to have a sense of adventure and was drawn to living life on the raw edge. Once his girlfriend had departed, Slavko had shunned formal campsites, hotels or backpackers. Lady Smith itself has plenty of these, being a historic town that attracts a fair amount of tourists each year. Slavko's father, Sergio, gave an interview to the Lady Smith Gazette. He said his son preferred to avoid formal tourist structures. Instead, he relied on meeting locals, often spending the night with local villagers, or, if this didn't happen, he would camp out under the stars, wherever he found a place to pitch his tent. One of the last people to see Slavko alive was Pastor Peter Hambridge of the Malusi Mission House in Dundee. Hambridge was concerned that Slavko was traveling alone and making camp out in the open. When Slavko set off again a few days later, Hambridge prayed for his safety. I also warned him that it was not safe and he must be careful when on the road. Slavko seemed unconcerned, however. As an experienced traveler, he was used to sleeping outdoors. He said he had been in far worse areas in Chile, Hambridge said. Ladysmith itself lies in the center of historic battlegrounds where the Zulu kingdom once fought invaders. The Zulus battled the Boers and later the British. They were eventually overcome and the once proud nation was subjected to white rule that lasted for more than a century. Today, like many small rural South African towns, Ladysmith remains largely divided along racial lines. White people occupy the town itself, 
settled into the suburbs where they run shops and bed and breakfasts. Apartheid is long gone, but black residents live mostly in a settlement on the edge of the town and work as laborers on surrounding farms. Endemic poverty results in sporadic protests that turn into riots as local black residents demand better services and jobs. Police as yet have no suspects in Slavko's killing. His campsite was close to Steadville, the black neighborhood where poverty is overriding and endemic. Pitching his tent out in the open, in a spot where drug abusers gather near one of the poorest neighborhoods in the town, was probably a fatal error. Slavko would not have known the local dynamic or how he might be perceived by people struggling merely to survive. To some locals, he would have appeared a rich foreigner with a backpack, cash, a camera and a smartphone, all highly desirable to desperate people in search of the next meal or fix.